What do you think is mo most intriguing for new new players for this book? Because I think it's I think this book is very good for also absorbing new players and teaching them D and D maybe as well, you know, with the new adventures and everything else. Because you you have to expect a, a not only does this for me satisfy old school D and D yeah. players, but I think it's going to make new players very happy as well and the critters out there who maybe were scared of taking that leap into D and D. I think that this book really succeeds in, it describes a lot of the world, but it doesn't impose itself so strongly upon you that you can't make it your own. What it's trying to say is, here's a bunch of stuff that you can play with, and you'll gravitate toward something, and you can make that your own. There's that sense of not everything is so codified and so locked down that you can't invent within this setting. I think this book does a very good job of encouraging you to invent within the setting. Um, I get the feeling after reading the Wild Mount book that there's so much to Wild Mount that I can add personally yeah. um, to make it my own. Not everything is so locked in place. Uh, the other thing is it's a, it's a very friendly book. It leads you in well. It rolls out the information in a very accessible way. Uh, it contains characters that you can believe in to be real. They're not, they're not dull, they're not boring, they sort of reflect a kind of diversity that you would expect to see in a real world. They, There's a complexity. There is a complexity there, uh, or a sense that this has all been very well thought out. It's also friendly, of course, because of all the effort that Matt and the writers took to build experiences like the starting adventures, to kind of lead you in. And they're, the way that the starting adventures are written, the assumption being that this might be the first adventure you've ever run as a dungeon master. Yeah. So it's hand-holding without making you feel like you're a dummy, uh, basically. It's, it's, it's very gently and artfully done. Um, I think that the heroic chronicle, which resides in the, the chapter on character options, right. is also a great way for new DMs to really kind of wrap their brains around the setting and build characters or help players build characters that belong in the world. Yeah. The Heroic Chronicle, um, for those who don't know, is this, I, is this thing that you, this kind of little journey that you and the players go on while you're creating your characters that helps them root their characters in the world. And it, with a series of tables and things, you can determine who some of your, who some of the, individuals from your character's past are in the world. They might be friend or foe. Uh, you know, what's your favorite meal in, yeah. in Wild Mount? Things like that. All of this helps paint the world as a real place, and all of this helps give you ammunition or fodder uh, as a player that you can use to make your character feel like that they're part of this world. I'm very excited for that. Uh, I talked to James Hake about it, and he, uh, he he's like, Todd, since you've turned uh, making characters into its own metagame, <laughs> you will enjoy this. Because <laughs> I have like 65 character concepts. That's all. Like, that's what I do before I go to sleep. Is I like, oh, make a character idea. <laughs> and that's how I go to sleep. That's not a bad way to set yourself off into dreamland. Oh, yes. No, it's, it's lovely. Yeah. And I highly recommend it because it also keeps, I think it keeps you creatively a little bit sharp as well and allows you to pull NPCs out of. Uh, Pretty willy-nilly. Um. Another thing that Don War does, and this is something that Matt does naturally in his games, is he takes things that exist in D&D but kind of puts a little bit of a subtle spin on them. Yeah. Uh, we see it with his handling of dark elves in the setting. Right. You know, these aren't the dark elves that you normally see in crawling around in the Underdark. This is a, this is a, a surface-dwelling variation of that. And what that tells DMs or readers of the book is, oh, I can take the stuff that exists in the game take it out of its natural element and make it into something that feels new and fresh for my players. Right. And this book is full of that stuff. It's a very good message to those who are may, maybe thinking of creating their own campaign setting. Yes. Uh, in, yeah, it's, it's also just, it's good for us in a way, Wizards, because we often go back to stuff that was created uh, or campaign settings that were that existed in earlier editions, and will, like we did recently, sort of refresh them for fifth edition. Mm -hmm. um, 
this is the, I guess this is the first campaign setting we've done for 5th edition that is not a refresh of an old campaign setting. A lot of people in our community got their start playing D&D with 5th edition. They've never seen a campaign setting created specifically for the edition. And this is, this is a great example. So they'll read it and they'll go, oh, some of them, a few of them will go, I want to do this. I want to take my world and do exactly what Matt Mercer did with his. That's great. If this, if this book creates uh, more creative campaign setting builders, then hey, better for the world. Pre-order now on dndbeyond.com and receive exclusive bonus content with everything that you need to start your own adventure.